perfect competition market. In this particular 5 to 10 minute video, I am going to explain to you what is a market which is represented by perfect competition. Okay. Now, we all know that in a market, there are various factors which are interacting with each other. There are various firms, F1, F2, F3, F4. Okay. And there are a large number of buyers, equally number of sellers, and there is a commodity, right? A perfect competition market is a market wherein none of the firms, so let's say you have four firms in this case. In a perfect market condition, none of these firms, neither F1, nor F2, nor F3, nor F4, or they could be as many as possible up to Fn, none of these firms can individually, cannot influence the market price of a product on their own. Unlike certain other cases wherein you know let's say firm 1 was manufacturing 90% of the total product in the market then it obviously is in a position to increase or decrease the supply and accordingly the price of this product but in case of a perfect competition this is not the situation so none of these firms individually can affect or impact the price why because let's say for example each one of them was controlling 25 percent share of the market right each one of them owns 25 percent now even if one guy stops supplying it to the market still there will not be a terrible shortage why? Because 75% is still around. So none of these firms can independently impact the market price of a product. Right? In a perfect competition, there are two things which are assumed. So let's say these are the assumptions. You can even call them as conditions. So what are these assumptions? The first assumption in case of a perfect competition is that of a pure competition, right? And the second is that of a perfect market. Now you must be wondering what does pure competition means or what is represented by perfect market? Let's take them one by one. Let's first deal with pure competition. Now, when is a pure competition treated as having existed? The first condition for pure competition is that there are a large number of buyers and sellers. Right? Large number of buyers and sellers. Now, how does this condition impact the case of a perfect competition? The way it impacts is, is that even if one or more buyers or even if one or more sellers go out from the market, it doesn't impact the overall demand and supply scenario. Okay? So, even if one of the buyers or sellers goes out of market, it will not impact the entire thing. Right? So, from a seller's perspective, the price at which he can sell is already given. We also call this condition as the price taker. The seller is a price taker. Whatever is the price in the market, he has to accept it. He cannot sell above it. Okay. Similarly, a buyer also is a price taker because there is a given price at which commodities are available. He cannot bargain to get anything at a lower price. Right? The second condition is homogeneous product. 
you understand the meaning of homogeneous that means same okay so what happens is while there are so many of these firms in the market right the product which is manufactured by all of them or some of them or one of them is basically same as the one which is manufactured by the other right so even if one of them starts or rather stop manufacturing something the other one can very well increase the quantity of supply it's not that whatever he was making no one else can make the product which one makes is a substitute for the other the one made by the second is substitute for the third and so on right so the product is homogeneous third is free entry or exit of firms now what does this mean this basically means that if new people want to come and start producing these things they can come and do that there are no entry barriers meaning that let's say for example in some cases if it is a capital intensive industry okay it might be difficult for new guys to come in and invest into this but there is no entry barrier right the firms have the freedom to either come in or to go out to manufacture or not to manufacture right now let's move on to the second one which is perfect market now perfect market is also characterized by certain features the first one of which is perfect knowledge now who does have this perfect knowledge it's both the sellers and the buyers so a seller know how many per quantity he can sell right he has all the knowledge about the product market right similarly the buyer also has all the knowledge about the market so he knows what price which is selling anyone cannot fool him. the second is perfect mobility of factors of production so all the factors of production namely land labor capital they can freely move from one firm to the other or one job to the other or the workers can move from one job to the other okay so it's not that you know because some skilled laborers are not available so therefore if someone stops producing the market will stop right and the third one is that there are no selling stroke transportation cost because if there are selling and transportation cost that might differentiate the cost factor okay so the selling cost are assumed to be zero right and the transportation cost is also assumed to be zero because it is assumed that all the goods are produced locally right so this is what it is all about perfect competition